Steve Grouchy, the Baptist Church. Thank you for coming out to Monday, Thursday services. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and for its savior for which it stands. One brotherhood, united in service and in love. Amen. Thank you, and now please wait for the pulpit. Good evening, Gratitude Baptist Church. And I have come to you with a sermon today called Lo Keep Loving Thy Neighbor. So, in case any of you are wondering what is Monday, Thursday, not Monday, Thursday, excuse me, not Monday, M O N D A Y, M A N D A Y. Monday, Thursday is the first three days of solemn remembrance to the events of leading up to and immediately following the crucifixion of Jesus. The word Monday comes from the Latin word mandatum, which means commandment. So open your Bibles to the book of John chapter 13 verse 3 and I am going to show, show you what Jesus did was all about love and why should you yourself keep loving your neighbor so the first reason for the first way is to love those that have betrayed you so let's look in the book of John, chapter 13. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, that he had coming from God, was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wash them with the towel which he was girding. Then he said to Simon Peter, and Peter said, Lord, why are you washing my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will know after this. So we're going to go ahead and go down to verse 12. So when he had washed their feet, Taking his garments and sat down again, he said unto them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and I say, Well, for so I am. If then I am your Lord, teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. Now remember now, Judas was one of the disciples, but he is although important. Because Judas was the one betrayed Jesus, allowing Jesus to go to the cross. Matter of fact, tomorrow, which is Friday, Saturday, because tomorrow's Good Friday, we'll be holding Good Friday services around the same time. But Saturday, we will be teaching you what did Jesus do while he was dead or while he was in his tomb. And it's very important because back in the days between Jesus' arrival and then Adam's eating the knowledge of good and evil, everybody went to Hades, Christian, non-Christian. We will see tomorrow or Saturday how to put a stop to that. The second way is your enemy. Your enemy, remember, will shall be revealed. Probably wondering, well, um, simply, how does that make sense? Sometimes love 
calls people out. One time, this lady picked up a hitchhiker. Now, this is a parable of Grouchy Baptist Church, but picked up a hitchhiker and then was very nice, offered the hitchhiker dinner and a place to sleep for the night and then left. The hitchhiker called back a few days later saying, you better thank God that you were a very nice person because the hitchhiker was planning to beat her and kill her. But the kindness of it all took him out of that state. So sometimes, most of the time, it helps more to love somebody through their wrongdoing or their intended wrongdoing than to actually go and hate them for it. This is why you do not discipline your kids when you are angry. Because when you discipline your kids when you are angry, you're going to take the punishment all the way up here. This is why the judge is supposed to stay calm. This is why discipline and anger doesn't go together because eventually it's not going to be discipline anymore. It's going to be revenge, vendetta, something that the Bible prohibits. Your enemy will be revealed if you keep loving. And it happens so, so many times. Your enemy can also be a footstool. Because if you ever go back to that factory, the call sermon, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If your enemy is thirsty, give him a drink. This will be like pouring burning coals on his head. Doing this will result in the enemy to express unnecessary amounts of sorrow for his crimes. So this is why it's important to love. Sometimes when you love your enemies, your enemies will come out of the darkness and reveal to you what they did. Sometimes your enemies will love you back and then apologize for what you did because if you have love for one person, again I say unto you, if you have love for one person, you will be much less likely to sin unto them. Now somebody say amen. But here's the last point. Jesus had to die for our sins. Had. That was the only way to free the Christian. Christians can go to heaven and not to paradise. Paradise was a novel word for Hades in the Bible. I'll tell you more Saturday. But let's go down to the new commandment. So when he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him immediately. Little children, I shall be with you a while longer. You will seek me, and I say to the Jews, where I am. You cannot come, now I say to you. A new commandment is given unto you. Love one another as I have loved you. By this we all know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Love. Jesus did not hate anybody in the Bible. He did it. And people see the word hate for God, for whom God hated in the Bible. But we misinterpret it. I used to misinterpret it. Through studying eventually, I find out that God's hate is different than our hate. God's hate means love less. So when God says he hates, that means he loved this person just a little bit more than he loved you. He loved you very much, and he loved you very, very much. That's what it means. He still loves you, but it's only one very, as I said in the example, while the other two persons get two. So that's what he means by hate. He loved you less than he loved the other person. Even the people who he put in Hades. Now remember, Hades is the place where unbelievers and sinners who don't repent. 
not sinners. We're all sinners. I'm a sinner. All sinners. But I repent. You repent. I hope all of you repent. I'm going to pray a prayer for repentance right about now. But we would be eligible for heaven if we pray this prayer. 